to the first edition of Books Nintendo News. I'm Hope Corrigan, aka Museshake, and I'm here to give you the rundown on what happened this week in Nintendo. First up, very exciting, a couple of days ago we finally got the Wii U firmware update 3.0. This is the spring update that we've been waiting for for such a long time. The big thing we've been waiting for in this update is that loading times, which are a bit of a problem on the Wii U, have been significantly cut down when going from games to apps to menu screen. The Wii U can now automatically download updates itself, and we'll even install them while in standby mode. You can also copy between two USB devices, and we now have access to undo and redo buttons while drawing and writing in the Miibo. This update also came with an option to have the R18 parental lock on the Wii U, which is critical to having R18 games on the console, because beforehand people could play it while the parental lock was on, which could have been detrimental to Nintendo. This will hopefully allow for the release of Ninja Gaiden 3, which has already been released on 360, PS3, and even the Vita. Downloads from the eShop will now be the latest edition of that game, which means that there's no straightaway updating you'll need to do when making purchases. And speaking of purchases on the eShop, probably the most exciting piece of news about this update is that it's preparing us for the Virtual Console. We got the Virtual Console sooner than we expected after the update, being the very next day. If you've already got a Virtual Console game on your Wii, which you can still play in the Wii mode on the Wii console, you could pay to get an upgrade to a Wii U version. Thankfully this isn't too much, being about $1.50 for NES and $1.95 for SNES games, and it will allow you to play in 60Hz, which has been an issue on the PAL versions. A few games made available in this update are the Wii Panorama, Super Mario World, Excite Bike, F-Zero, and Kirby's Adventure for only 30 cents. We have a full list of Virtual Console games available on the website, as well as a list of all the updates that 3.0 brought to the Wii U. Another interesting development that happened this week is that beta mode for Miiverse on websites and phones is now available. There are some limitations to this, as you can only comment on pre-made posts and yeah things. However, the newly added features to Miiverse, such as taking screenshots of games and drawings, are available. Satoru Awata was named CEO of Nintendo America, as well as his current role. This means he replaces Tatsumi Kimishima, who has been CEO of Nintendo America since 2006. Kimishima will become General Manager of Corporate Analysis and Administration, and General Manager of the General Affairs Division, which are currently held by Mori and Matsumoto, who are retiring. And don't worry, because Reggie will remain the COO of Nintendo America. Hopefully his body is ready for Awata. Something that has baffled much of the gaming community is that Nintendo has decided against having a major display at E3 this year. Instead, they've decided to relay the information to fans by having several Nintendo Directs leading up to the event. They're also having two smaller events at E3 this year. People are wondering if this is a show of lack of confidence for Nintendo, or if they're simply taking it in a new direction. Hopefully we'll have more on what Nintendo are doing at E3 in the weeks to come. Australian 3DS fans are having trouble finding their games in stores. Titles such as Monster Hunter, Luigi's Mansion, and Fire Emblem are nigh impossible to see in physical retail stores. Many retailers aren't even showing listings for these games anymore. Fire Emblem having come out more recently is having less trouble compared to the others, but we're worried about what we're going to see in the development of this as weeks go on. The issue isn't so much with fans buying all the games, it's that stores aren't even getting enough stock to fill their pre-orders, so the actual availability of games for people walking into the store is pretty much nil. Luckily we still have the option to purchase and download on 3DS. Or are we? Many people are speculating that this is a push from Nintendo to get us to download more games. The margin on games from downloading is a lot higher than retail stores, as there's no middleman to pay. Here at Vox, we don't really believe this, especially as Nintendo has recently released an apology about this and promises to make it better. That being said, it will be something on the minds of many 3DS fans as new games come out, especially with heavy hitters such as Animal Crossing and Pokemon XY. This is the second year in a row that Nintendo has made operating losses. This is worse than their January predictions of 20 billion yen. With these losses, Nintendo are talking about ways to obviously try to get more money. Things that we may be seeing in the future, such as utilising the new web-based Miiverse as an advertising system, and reducing the costs of manufacturing a Wii U. There's also going to be more of a push for Japanese games, which will be great to see some of those games coming to our shores. That being said, Nintendo do have high hopes for Pokemon XY and Animal Crossing to hopefully build stocks. Last of all, Nintendo have updated their top-selling game charts per console. If you'd like to find out more about stories mentioned today, or see that list, check out our website at books.net. I'm Hope Corrigan, aka Museshake, and I'll be back next time to give you your week of Nintendo.